Hi folks and welcome to the Cardiac Rehab Podcast. Today we're joined by exercise physiologist and nutrition specialist Sam Jones and we're going to be talking about cholesterol and diet. So first of all Sam, tell us what is cholesterol and what is the difference between good and bad cholesterol? Serum or blood cholesterol is carried around the body within the blood vessels and is essential for life, producing hormones such as estrogen and testosterone. When cholesterol combines with proteins, they then become lipoproteins. And this is when they will become either a good cholesterol, a high density lipoprotein, or a bad cholesterol, a low density lipoprotein, or a non high density lipoprotein. I'm going to break these terms down. Bad cholesterol delivers cholesterol to the cells from the liver. Now it's when you get overproduction of the bad cholesterol. It will lead to buildup of cholesterol within the vessels of the body. Now, the good cholesterol, the high density lipid protein, this removes excess cholesterol from the cells within the human body, returning them to the liver where the liver can dispose of them as waste. So, ideally, we'd like more good cholesterol and less bad cholesterol within the body. So, how do dietary fats affect the production of cholesterol? Fats tend to be separated into two different forms, saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Saturated fats alter the way the liver produces cholesterol, and they do this by reducing the efficiency of the liver to remove cholesterol from the bloodstream, whereas unsaturated fats increase the efficiency of removal of cholesterol from the bloodstream. We may find within the Mediterranean diet, it is quite a high fat diet. However, a lot of the, these fats will be unsaturated. Therefore, even though it's a high fat diet, they will have lower levels of cardiovascular disease than the British diet. However, there is a condition called familiar hypercholesteremia, and this is a genetic condition passed down from parents where people will overproduce cholesterol, and this can lead to increased risk of cardiovascular disease. So for those individuals who suffer from familial hypercholesterolemia, it's really important that they have medications to bring their cholesterol down. But for the vast majority of us, it's important that we try and make some dietary changes and reduce the amount of saturated fat within the diet. So when we're looking at food labels, is there anything in particular that we should be looking at in regard to fats? Food labelling tends to come in the traffic light system, where green is good to red to avoid. Fats tend to be separated into two parts, total fat content and saturated fat content. The majority of processed foods will be high in saturated fats. It is important to distinguish between the two when we were looking for good fats within a healthy heart diet. So tell us a bit more about healthy fats. Are there different types of healthy fats? And can you give us some examples? Healthy fats are the unsaturated type of fats. The British Heart Foundation splits these up into three different sections, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated and omega-3 fats. The difference between the three is the amount of bonds connecting them, so mono will be singular, poly will be, will be many. An example of monounsaturated fats will be the olive oil, the rape oil, the avocado and nuts and seeds. Polyunsaturated fats. It uh, will also come from cooking oils, for example, corn oil, sunflower oil or soya oil. It uh, will also be found in nuts and seeds and can be found in oily fish, for example, mackerel, pilchards, herring, salmon and trout. And omega-3 fats are fish oils. And what about bad fats? Are there different types of bad fats and where would we find these? The British Heart Foundation splits these into two sections saturated fats and trans fats. Trans fats are man-made. Their primary job is to increase the shelf life of food. So on that basis, these tend to be found in fried food, takeaways, pastries, cakes, biscuits, things like that. Now the saturated fats, which are naturally occurring, are often but not always found in animal products. So this may be the hard cheeses, uh, whole milks, butters, fatty meats, biscuits, cakes, but they can also be found in palm oil, coconut oil, dripping. The saturated fats are often used or traditionally in Britain used for cooking. 
Now, what you may find with these fats is they do not break down as easily under high temperatures. So, for example, cooking with olive oil in a high temperature um, may or will cause the olive oil to change form into a greater amount of trans fats. So you've mentioned previously that too much bad cholesterol in the body can lead to an increased risk of developing coronary heart disease. So apart from making healthy dietary changes and trying to lower the amount of bad fats we have in our diet, are there any other ways that we can reduce the amount of bad cholesterol in our bodies? There are other ways to help reduce the amount of bad cholesterol within your body. Number one could be more active. This does not mean going to the gym in the current climate if you do not feel safe. This can be as simple as using the stairs instead of a lift next time you go to a shopping centre or the hospital. Number two, reducing alcohol intake. The body has to turn any alcohol into fat before it can, it can make use of it. Therefore, increasing the fat content of the human body helps to increase the amount of bad cholesterol. Number three is stop smoking. Smoking also helps to increase the amount of LDL or bad cholesterol within the human body. Many cardiac patients tend to be prescribed cholesterol-lowering medications, such as statins or ezetimibe. Can you tell us a bit about these medications and what they do? Many of you will be on medication to control the rate of cholesterol within your body. The main type is statins. These work by inhibiting an enzyme reducing the production of cholesterol by the liver. Furthermore, patients may be on azetabide. This one reduces the reabsorption rate of cholesterol by the liver from the blood, forcing the liver to work harder to make more cholesterol. Now, these medications come in different dosages uh, and different types. They will be controlled by your consultant and by, by your, your GP. Thank you everybody for listening. Please remember to check out the other videos on YouTube and the regular updates on Facebook.